Greetings, today's prophet is Don O'Brien, sermon of the Lord with Don's Heartfelt Corner here. I have a prophetic word that I'd like to share with you. I've had a busy morning. I've been up since 2 a.m. and then I had some errands I had to do and God has been moving. And it kind of goes along with the word that I'm going to share with you. Um, I wasn't going to share right now, but I feel the Holy Spirit wants me to share it with you. Um, because then I'm going to share a praise report that goes along with the prophetic word that I'm going to share with you. And I want you to pray for it for a day on it because um, God's getting ready to move, saints. I really truly believe, not just in our life, but I know in others as well. Let's pray and invite the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here to say what you're wanting me to say. I yield myself to you, precious Holy Spirit. I ask you to speak through me. Give me grace and strength, Lord. I feel tired, Lord. And quicken my spirit, Lord, and help me to speak forth what you're having me say, Lord. Father, we thank you for this time, Lord. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. We come against all distractions. May this word go forth, touching hearts and touching lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right. I'm a little tired of saying, so bear with me today. But let me share um a word of, I'm going to read you this word um, when my glasses are here, in case I need them here. Let's, um, this word is from that little devotional I get, I don't know if you get it, Our Daily Bread. I love to read the Our Daily Bread. And I read it today, and I thought this was a really good word, so I want to share it with you. Expect and extend mercy. God have mercy on me, a sinner, Luke 18, 13. And I like this, so listen, this is really good. When I complained that a friend's choices were leading her deeper in dissent and how her actions affected me. The woman I prayed with weekly placed her hand over mine. Let's pray for all of us. I frowned. All of us? Yes, she said. Aren't you the one who always says Jesus sets our standard of holiness so we shouldn't compare our sins to the sins of others? That truth hurts a little, I said, but you're right. My judgmental attitude and spiritual pride are no better or worse than her sins. And that's so true. Everyone's sins is the same. We shouldn't, should not judge our brother or sister. We need to take the plank out of our own eye and then we'll see the speck in our brother's eye. It goes on to say, and by talking about your friend, we're gossiping. So we're sinning. I lowered my head. Please pray for us. In Luke 18, Jesus shared a parable about two men approaching the temple to pray in very different ways. Like the Pharisee, we can become trapped in a circle of comparing ourselves to other people. We can boast about ourselves and live as though we have the right to judge and the responsibility or the power to change others. Don't we try to change people? Hey, I'm talking to someone. What women have you have you tried to change your husband, ladies? How about men? You want to change your wife? You know, we're always trying to change one another. We need to let God do the changing. All right, I just felt led to say that. God put that on my heart. But when we look to Jesus as our example of holy living and encounter his goodness firsthand, like the tax collector, our desperate need for God's grace is magnified. As we experience the Lord's loving compassion and forgiveness personally, we'll be forever changed and empowered to expect and extend mercy, not condemnation to others. And there is a little prayer, Lord, please keep us from falling to the trap of comparing ourselves to others. Amen. Mold us and make us more like you. Is that your prayer? That's my prayer. I want to be more like Jesus. I don't want to be judging my brothers and sisters. This says here, when we realize the depth of our need for mercy, we can more readily offer mercy to others. And it's so true. When you yourself are going through trials and sufferings, you can reach out to others with mercy and love and compassion. All right. I just like that, and I felt that I needed to share that. The sun keeps coming on this screen and going off and on, so um, I hope you can see me okay. Um, let's, it's kind of bright out right now. It's been high here in Florida. I told you it's like 97, 98. Now, I was talking to my dad in Chicago. It's not that hot up there, but it's hot here in Florida. Let's go on this um, live earthquake map. We are online. So, 
But I want to read to you, you know, we've been having earthquakes. I'm telling you, we're getting near something, saints. Something is definitely coming. All right. If you look at, you know, I've been placing up news. Um, I put um, brother reports from Dutch since every night he does a report. I put that up there for you to take a look at. You know, on the front of our website is a place where I can place videos for news. And you, I don't look at all of them, but I do place the news up there so that you can take a look at it. And um, in the center of our website, there's a section. So I do that pretty much daily between five to ten videos and that. All right, so let's go to this live earthquake map here. I'm going to read you some of the big ones. We just had a 5.0 and 5.3 an hour ago in Fiji. All right, um, 2.3 in California. Oh, there was a volcano in Alaska, 1.2. Washington had a small one. That was four hours ago, 0.1. That's real small. Oklahoma had a 2.4 four hours ago. Now, there was three 2.7 in Canada five hours ago. 2.2 in California, 1.4 in California five hours ago. 4.1 in Chile six hours ago, and 4.6 in Tonga. 2.1 in California six hours ago, and they had another one, 2.4. So we're seeing some twos and threes. They even had some threes. Uh, let me see if it still shows up here. I know that two earlier this morning. Oklahoma had a 3.7 hours ago. Utah had a 1.3. Indonesia had a big one, 4.9. And Alaska, 3.4, eight hours ago. There was two volcanoes that erupted Alaska eight hours ago, 1.6. And the other one was a 1.6 as well. And then we see a 5.7 in South Sandwich Islands nine hours ago, a 4.2 in Chile nine hours ago, 5.1 in Santa Cruz Islands in Australia, that was 10 hours ago, and 5.2 in Vanuatu 10 hours ago, and a 4.4 in Chile 11 hours ago. Now, I think the other ones in California might have been earlier, but they they had like two in the, a 3.5 and a 3.6 or a 3.8, something like that. All right, so that is what is happening with the earthquakes now. All right, I want to share this word with you. And I'm going to share it first, and then I'm going to talk with you about what happened today. Okay? Um, because it goes with pretty much what God said to me when I get to the end. And this word is not just for Daniel and I. This was a word, yes, the Lord did give to us. But it's a word for you as well. I know there are Christians that God is talking to and he wants to encourage you he wants to let you know don't give up your breakthrough is coming okay and I'm gonna read this word to you and I heard him say this to me at 807 a.m. yesterday it is time for a breakthrough that's right it's time for a breakthrough alright many of my children have been waiting for breakthrough hallelujah your breakthrough is just about here I hear the Lord say do not give up do not give in or turn back on the promises I have placed in your heart these promises are coming to pass praise God remember I've given you that scripture have a cup two two three though the vision tear wait for it it'll surely come so the vision of God's giving you a vision Hold on to that vision. Don't give up. You know, God gave me a vision uh, about what, things He's going to do years ago. And I read that scripture pretty much every day. I stand on God's word. I read Jeremiah. You know, uh, the plans He has for you. What does it say? Um, let me see. Where's that? Here, let's just read it. It's in, it's in my torn up Bible here. Let me, well, let's, let's read both of them here. Let me see. Where it, Habakkuk 2, 2, 3. Then the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain the tablet so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false, praise God. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. All right. That's Habakkuk 2, 2, 3. Let me see if I can find Jeremiah. Well, this is one of them. 32, verse 27. 
I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? No, nothing's too hard for the Lord. He can do anything. All right, Jeremiah 29, starting verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you. Wait, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Hallelujah. Plans to give you a hope, your hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Verse 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So you have to seek Jesus. You know, God's got a plan. Yeah, he does, but you've got to seek the Lord so that you can find out what that plan is. And the only way you're going to do it is by you spending time with God. You know, you're not going to just wake up and automatically know what God has for you. Maybe some of you are asking God, what, what, what is your plan, Lord? What do you have for me? Start spending time with God. Start seeking God. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you through His Word or through His still voice. He'll speak to your spirit, man, let you know. And sometimes you don't hear it right away. I mean, you're going to have to seek Him and seek Him and seek Him, okay? And spend time with the Lord. You know, you, you spend time with your husband, your wife, your children. Well... Spend time with your Father, your Heavenly Father. He wants to spend time with you. All right. This also is what God gave me. I heard him say, this is the hour for my children to rise. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord say, you are about to rise to higher heights, much higher than you have ever been before. Praise God. That's why I heard him say that. And definition of the word rise. Here's the definition. Move from a lower position to a high one, an instant of becoming, of becoming higher. Reach a higher position in society. Succeed and not be limited or constrained. Promotion, an instant of social, commercial, or political advancement. An increase in salary or wages. Are you needing God to increase your salary or wages? You know, maybe you're, you know, you've gone without, you know, and you've had nothing. You know, God knows. God will supply all our needs, but I really believe those that are following, God's going to bless you. I really believe that. You know, I, I know God's going to bless Daniel. I believe that. And Jesus gets the glory. Are you ready? This will take place instantly, I hear the Lord say. You will not need to do anything, for I will do it, says the Lord. All right? God's going to do it instantly. I know that. You know, Daniel and I sit here and we wait and we wait. And we wait. We watch days, months, years go by. Daniel and I have literally been sitting here waiting over 25 years, saints. And we're about to see that vision come to pass. And I know I'm talking to others. I know there are others on here that have been waiting. Keep waiting. Don't give up. And you, even if your promise doesn't come tomorrow, don't give up. Remember I told you it's like in a doctor's office. When your name is called, it's time for you to go. Okay? The harvest is playing with the workers are few. God wants to use more of us in these last days. All right. He said, all you need to do, my children, is sit still and wait upon me to move, says the Lord. You know, and I've noticed in this next part that I'm going to share, you know, God's been speaking to me about, um, to, like, the body of Christ, I'm speaking to certain people. I've noticed that. He's giving me more words of knowledge, you know, and it, I can hear him talking this way. And I'm actually just writing it out, you know. And so this is all new for me. So continue to pray for me that I will hear God clearly because I want to hear his voice. He said there are doors, many doors I'm about to open up for some of you, my children. See, some of you, God's going to open those doors for. You've been waiting. Keep waiting. It's about to happen. You have been obedient, says the Lord, to do my will. I have chosen you, sons and daughters, to proclaim my words to a dying generation. Go forth when I say go and do my will, says the Lord. The harvest is planted, but the workers are few. I need more to come alongside of you that are willing to take up their cross and follow me, says the Lord. There is no turning back. You must be willing to pay the high price. Christ, I hear the Lord say, and I hear him say this, if, if you're, he, well, let me go back to this, he said, 
You must be willing to pay the high price, I hear the Lord say. If you're going to follow me, see, if you're going to follow God, you're going to have to take up your cross. And it's, there's a high price with it. It comes with a high price. There is a price to pay, says the Lord. You will lose everything in this world if you're going to follow me and do my will. I know we don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear about dying to self, our flesh being crucified. You know, we want to hear, bless me, bless me, bless me. You know, what tickles our ears, that, that we want to hear that. You know, and if we're not preaching that, guess what happens? We go somewhere else. Well, God is getting ready to speak the truth. All right? I know people don't like to hear this. Why do you think no one gives to our ministry? Huh? We give to those that are pre preaching false doctrine. But Daniel and I, I've got to be honest with you, we hardly get any money. We have two subscribers that have subscribed to us. If you'd like to help us, we're just going to stop right now. If you feel led to help us in our ministry, we could use your help. I know that there are those that have had to help us in the past. Okay, And you're going to help us in the future. I know without a shadow of my doubt. God has literally told me it's coming. Okay, And I know that um, maybe you're waiting for something. I don't know. But you know what? If God is talking to you, be obedient. Do what He's telling you. Don't do it because I tell you. Do it because Jesus is telling you. God honors faithfulness. All right. If you want to send something, you can to Don's Heartfelt Corner, P.O. Box 161273, Altamont Springs, Florida 32716. You can give a gift online through PayPal or on our YouTube page at www.dawnsheartfeltcorner.org. There's a place you can put it. All the address and link is all on our website. But do it on to Jesus. He gets all the glory. You know, stop giving your money into these ministries that are dead. I'm going to tell you right now, that's what they are. They're dead. Most of the ministries out there, not everyone, but the majority, I'm going to tell you right now, they're preaching false doctrine. They're not telling you what God's word says. They're lying to you. Do you want to listen to lies? I know I don't. I want to hear the truth. No, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you what you don't want to hear. If you're not squirming in your seat when I preach, I'm going to tell you right now there's something matter. Because I'm going to tell you, when I preach, get ready. Because I know I'm going to get people squirming in their seat. Because I'm here to please my Father. I'm not here to please you. And I'm sorry if that's harsh, but that's truthful. I'm not there to please man. I'm there to please my Heavenly Father. And that goes for you. Everything you do should be on to pleasing your Heavenly Father. Don't please man. Stop pleasing man. Women, are you trying to please your husband? Hey, I'm just saying. Are you doing what you're doing trying to please somebody else? Stop pleasing them. Or maybe your children. You know, you want to give your children everything? Stop doing it for them. You know, you need to back away and let God do it. I just felt to say that, you know, because, you know, we're, we're, we try to help God, but really we're hindering God. When we're doing everything, maybe God wants them to grow up and do it themselves. All right. Matthew um, 16, 24 through 26. Take up the cross and follow him was a... Uh, the scripture God gave me. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Verse 25. Whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Verse 26. For what profit is to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Is it getting dark in here? It's getting dark. Can you see me? I hope so. I feel like I'm sitting in the dark. I'm looking at the screen. It's, it's dark. Um, it's okay. Let me let me see if I can get up. Hit the blinds a little. Let's see. Let's see if that's too bright. It's a little better. You can see me now. All right. Let me read you a little more of what God said to me. He said, many I hear are opening doors on their own. Are you opening doors on your own? All right, he said this. They are not waiting upon me to open doors for them. All right. He said, that is why the doors have been shut in your face. You are doing things on your own, not led by my spirit. There are people I know. 
churches, I know there are people that are sitting in churches, they're not being led by the Spirit of God. They're being led by their own flesh. We need to be led by the Lord in these last days. We can't be going here, going there, doing this, making our own decisions, doing what we want to do. No, we've got to be seeking our Heavenly Father, asking God, Lord, what do you want us to do? Show us, Lord. Don't go moving and doing this and that without God telling you to do it. Now, I'm not telling you to sit here and wait like, Daniel, I've been sitting here for over 25 years. We're doing this because this is a commandment God's given us. All right? He's let us know when to move, when to stay. You know, remember that's right. Say move by the cloud by day and the cloud by night. So we've got to be led by the Lord. And God told me a long time ago to enjoy this time. You're going to get very busy. And, you know, I'm seeing him. He's about to do a lot more, you know. So I know I won't be home sitting here doing nothing. You know, right now I do. I spend time with God. I spend a lot of time with saints. I seek the Lord a lot of time. And I know very soon God's going to have me doing things. All right. So this is what he said. Stop pushing doors open. Let me open the doors for you. Relax, I hear the Lord say. I heard him say that. There are those striving, I heard him say. In your striving, you are wearing yourself out, I hear him say. When I, the Lord, move, everything comes together smoothly. All right? I put the pieces together and others look at all. Hallelujah. That's right. When you let God do what he needs to do, people are going to look and say, wow. They're not going to believe because it's going to be God. All glory is going to go to God. It's not going to go to you. You didn't do it. God did. So I know when God gets ready to move in our life, it's got to be God. So we sit here and we wait and we wait and we wait. We can't do anything. We try to do that. Remember I told you when we lived out in another apartment, we needed two signatures. We are trying this, trying that. Nothing was coming together. This came together. We ended up living here with Donna. This temporary 10 months, and now he's about to open the door. And I'm going to share in a minute what God is getting ready to do. And all glory goes to Jesus. And he's going to get all the glory. I give him all the praise. And he'll do the same for you. If you let God be God, stop trying to be God for him. Stop trying to help the Lord. All right? And this is um, what he gave me. I love this. Because... This is so true, and I'm going to share with you what he was already doing. This was the last thing he had me write. Today is your day. Everything in your life changes. I heard him say that to me. Yesterday, I heard him say, today is your day. Everything in your life changes. All right. And I'm going to tell you why I believe that. All right. First things first. Okay. Today, my husband was telling me, Remember I've told you there's like seven kids upstairs. They're packed. They're gone. They moved out. You know, every time the Lord has done something, like when I've had jobs and things, and when I'd have managers, and I'm like, God, get rid of them. You know, I remember how you would try to get a job because I wanted to help God. I had to get out of there. I couldn't handle it no more. So, um... It, it, right before he moved me out, the manager left. And I was like, God, why are they moving out? I mean, wh why are you moving me now? Because they're gone. Okay? So they moved out. That's the first thing. Okay? So I know God is getting ready to move Daniel and I out. Okay? Secondly, um, I went to Walmart today. I, I was going to go get my, hair, get my hair trimmed and my eyebrows waxed. So I went into Walmart, and you know, God is awesome. I went to Walmart, and um, I want you to know we love everyone. It doesn't matter, black, white, lesbian, gay, it doesn't matter. Daniel and I, we love everyone, and God wants us to love everyone. Not judging one would love them. So I was at Walmart, and this young boy, who's 20 years old, he's trimming hair, you know, and, you know, I kind of like, I didn't want him cutting my hair, I guess. And it's not that I was judging him. It's just he had only been doing hair for two years, you know. But, um, you know, in my situation, I don't get up there to get my hair trimmed. I don't think it's, I think it's been almost 10 months. So, um, but I went and had my hair trimmed by him. And he said the LA wasn't going to be in for how long. So, 
he took my hair and started talking to me and um, started telling me his mother is a Christian. All right, she's a strong Christian. He loves his mother. All right, and he told me he loved God. All right, and so we were talking, and I was God was using me to witness to him, and w when we were talking, he said, I have goosebumps on my arms, and he felt the presence of God, and he started crying. The Holy Spirit was there while I was talking to him. Then, he was telling me the lady, when she comes in, I, I don't even know these people. She's a Christian. She starts talking about the Lord. So he's getting it from his mother. He's getting it from the lady that works in the, the shop with him. But the thing about it, his mother, the, their father, the, his father left him when he was young, but the mother lost two babies before he was born, and she was committing him to the Lord, okay? That's what she was she committed him to the Lord. Now, she just got the, she, a problem with her. She got out of her drinking, and she's turning the food, and I'm, I prayed for his mother. But um, the neat thing was, before I left, God used me to pray with him. And he received the Lord. He's 20 years old. He prayed and received the Lord. He's gay. I said, gosh, you're awesome. And then he said, he, he it's like God gave me words for him. I felt that he had depression. I mean, he, it was like God was touching him. He had depression. I called out that. And then I said, um, God wants you to have friends. Because he, he's, a, he's a loner. He has no friends. So I prayed with him. To have friends have joy, him and his mother have to have worship music going in the house. I said, You need to have worship music in your house. Joy of the Lord is your strength. And so I hugged that boy and he was so happy, he was so excited. And and before we left, I said to him, you know, you have friends, you're not alone. I said, You've got your mother, you've got the lady that works here. I said most of all, you've got, and you've got me. And I told him that he needs to go ahead and, and, and send me an email so I can give our website. I told him to subscribe to our website so that we can help train you up in the Lord so that you can help others. You know, that's what it's about. So pray, saints. Pray that God will have him write me, you know, and that he'll come on our website and subscribe. You know, isn't that exciting? That's what's going to happen. That's what it's about, touching young people. You know, just when you th think, you know, God's not using you, the boom. You know, and that happened today, and I said, God, you're awesome. You know, God is awesome. So that was the second thing that happened, okay? And right after that, I came home. You know, I was happy. I'm like, God, I know you're getting ready to leave. Because the people are packing up, and they're getting ready to leave, and, and that. And I want you to pray for Daniel on. And I know where it's coming from. It's an attack from the enemy. Remember I told you this is temporary. Where Daniel and I went down. Our lease is coming up in August. Okay. And. Um, I had a problem with. With. Um, Don yesterday. But, but God worked it out. But out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, don't tell me this is the devil because I know how the enemy works. I get this call from my girlfriend. God bless her. I love her in the Lord, okay? But I could tell the enemy was speaking to her because she tells me they're going to be moving, Donna. So you and Daniel need to figure out where you're going to go. And sure enough, Daniel starts panicking. You know, because he's almost healed, but he's not healed yet. And, you know, and I said, stop it. Stop panicking. Because I know God knows exactly what's going on here. The enemy tried to pull me down, put fear in me, right after God was moving to let me know, look, where are you going to go? What are you going to do now? Your lease is coming up. Where are you going to go? But you know what? I know God knows. The devil is a liar. Maybe he's doing the same thing with you. All right, the devil is a liar, and you've got to tell him to get behind you in Jesus' name. You know, I know God's not going to stick Daniel and I out there in the public storage again. That's a lie from the devil. 
and I'm not going to listen to that. I'm not going to believe it. I believe God's about to open the door, saints. The Lord was showing me that today, that he is about to open doors. And the reason I'm saying that to you is because when I read that word to you that God gave me yesterday, today is your day. Everything in your life changes. And then those two things that happen, and then boom, the enemy wants to say, what are you going to do? You better hurry up and do something. They were telling me, you better hurry up. Better not wait till last minute or you're going to end up where you were last time. That's a devil. He's a liar. And then they're saying on to me, um, oh, you've been saying this for years. Well, you know what? That's okay. I'm going to believe. I'm going to stand on God's word. I'm not going to allow the devil to whisper in my ear that things will never change. Oh, yes, they will. They will change. And we're going to pray for all of us. So keep us in your prayers. Because I know God's about to open doors for all of us. Father, I just pray that right now for all of us. In Jesus' name, maybe there's others that are going through the same situation right now. And the devil's trying to put fear in them right now. We just come against that. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord. Our hope and our trust is in you, Lord. And we know you're going to move. Devil, we tell you to get behind us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for our victory. Thank you, Lord, for our deliverance, Lord. Thank you, Father, for what you're about to do, Lord, not just in our lives, but in the lives of others, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We offer up a sacrifice of praise. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. We thank you for open doors, Lord, doors that are getting ready to open that no devil in hell is going to shut. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We offer up a sacrifice of praise. And even those right now that are waiting, and Lord, maybe they have to keep waiting. Doors haven't opened yet, and, and they mean we still have to wait. But Lord, give them this grace and strength to keep waiting upon you, Lord. Not to give up. Not to turn back, Lord. That their promise will come, Lord, as they continue to stand fast and wait upon you, Lord. Lord, we just love you and we praise you. Father, I ask for a hedge of protection over all of us right now in Jesus' name. A hedge of protection, Lord. We take one day at a time. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, providing all of our needs according to your riches and glory, Lord. We don't need to worry. We come against that spirit of worry right now in Jesus' name. We come against it, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're in control, not man. You're in control, Lord. We thank you, Father, and we praise you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace, and for the, what you're about to do, Lord. Father, I pray for all those right now that may be out of work, Lord, and maybe they can't pay their bills and they don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Maybe they're, Lord, their note and their rent, Lord, maybe they've got to pay some bills because, Father, maybe something's going to happen tomorrow. Well, Father, I pray favor for them right now. In Jesus' name, Father, bring forth money for them and help them. Lord, pay their bills, help them get out of debt, Lord, whatever their situation is, Father. You're in control. We look to you. We don't look to man, Lord. We thank you and we praise you, Lord. I pray for everyone that's on here, Lord, that may be sick and by, Father. I pray right now. I stretch my hands in faith, Lord. I stretch my hands and agree with the people, Lord, right now. They're believing for a healing in their body from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name, whatever your sickness is. We claim your healing in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're going to be with us. To whatever comes our way, Lord, we don't need to worry, Lord. We take one day at a time. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. What a mighty God we serve, praise God. Let's just read this last poem here. You know, I wrote this poem. Back in 2015, you know, I've told you this before, the poems that I share with you, are, they're true, they're real. They're things that Daniel and I have had to go through, trials, sufferings, you know. So when you hear these poems that I'm reading to you, they're not made up. They're not something I just made up. These are actual things we've lived out in our life. So the anointing of God, I know, is on it. I said to the Lord, when I was starting books a long time ago, I said, God, I want your power and anointing on this, this material. When people read it, I want them to be touched. I want them to feel your presence when I'm coming around them. Because it's God. It's God. It's not you. It's not me. It's God. 
We need to give God the praise. All glory and honor goes to Jesus. Let's give Jesus the praise. Hallelujah. New doors of breakthrough. New doors of breakthrough are opening, I hear the Lord say. When God win, is it today? I wait, 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 and keep waiting. The Lord never gives me a clue. He keeps me wondering how and what he plans to do. During this trial, he gives me hope to see the vision through. Waiting is easier said than done. Who wants to wait watching everyone have fun? Years, days, months, hours, minutes, and seconds go by. How much longer, God, until this misery will subside? I know you've said that too. When's it going to end, Lord? When, God, when? God has taught me to submit and bend. When, God, when? It started way back then. This trial started while in my 20s, still young. Throughout the years, I've come down some. Now I'm in my 40s with gray hair. Have you left me, God, or are you still there? God, I'm tired and want to rest. You tell me now you've saved me the best. There are no more tears. God, you waited until my golden years. My body feels dead and nothing to give. Jesus, you're my reason why I still live. Is he your reason? Jesus is our reason. Come, Holy Spirit, awaken me today. Breathe upon my spirit, O oh, it may. Job 33, 4. The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. And that's right. Jesus gives me life. He is what helps us, saints. He helps us to live, move, and have our being. He's what gets us up in the morning. I know he helps me. He'll be there to help you if you'll call upon him. Maybe you don't know Christ. Maybe you have not made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Now is the time. Today is the day. Now is the time of God's salvation. Don't wait. Don't keep putting it off for a later day. If you do not know Christ and you have never accepted Christ into your heart, line, do it now. Bow your head with me and pray this prayer. Say, Dear Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. I ask you to wash me and cleanse me in your blood. Come into my heart and save me. I believe you died for me, Jesus, to give me eternal life. I receive you now, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. Amen, amen. Praise God. That's the most important prayer you'll ever pray. If you just said that prayer, go and share the good news with someone. Tell them what Christ has just done for you. The address is up on the screen. We'd love to hear from you. Write us a letter today. Let us know if Christ has just saved you. If you have a praise report, you know, feel free to send it to heartfeltcorner10 at gmail.com. Or you can put it right here on YouTube, up on Facebook. Don't put it anywhere else. Let us know if you have a a prayer or a word of encouragement or something you'd like to share. I can't promise you I'll get back to you. I've had people want me to call. I'm not going to do that. I'm getting busier. I want you to know God loves you and He cares about you and all that you're going through. He cares about your needs, saints. I want you to know that He is all we have. We can't go to people. It's going to get so bad. We're not going to be able to go to no one. We're going to have to go to Jesus. We're going to have to get on our knees and go to Jesus. Um, and I think that's it. I think that was everything I wanted to say. I want to get that word out to you because I felt like God wanted me to share that with you. Because I know we're not the only ones going through this. I know you're going through it too. And I know God's getting ready to raise you up too. All right? It's not just for us. All right? When he speaks a word to me, even a word of correction, it's for me, saints. I want you to know that. It's not just for you. It's for me. He's talking to me. So I'm, you know, I, I need it too. God's changing all of us from glory to glory. All right, I'm going to come on here when God gives my word. I think that's it. I think I told you everything. We, we looked at the earthquakes in that. Um, you know, tomorrow is the last day of this month. All right. So I'm telling you, I believe something's coming soon. You know, I put up that thing about earthquake watch January 28th through June 5th because I got it from a website. But I do believe it's any time now because, you know, Israel's been celebrating the 50-year anniversary. June 5th, 1967 is the Six-Day War. And then we got Pentecost is coming June 4th, okay? And we're hearing more about these North Korea sending off more bombs, too. I mean, I'm telling you, saints, we're getting near something. And the 
earthquakes are increasing on the West Coast. Okay, we may think that we're exempt and it's not going to happen. Oh, yes, it is. Canada's been getting them. Um, I'm trying to think where else. Um, Mexico, you know, Alaska, volcanoes are waking up. I mean, I'm telling you, I'll, we have them every few minutes. The, the earthquakes are increasing in California. And right now, we're going through that slow slope. Um, Dutch since talks about, he knows more about it. But he says something about when it stops. Then, boom, he, he thinks we're going to get a big one. Now, I believe we are, too. I believe a big one's coming. We could have, who knows, a tsunami? I don't know. Is it going to happen now or later? You know, I believe something's going to happen that's going to drastically change our nation. We are getting very, 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 very close. And, you know, and don't go listening to people that, 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 that don't believe that. I'm going to tell you right now, the church, I don't know, they're living in their own world. My dad and I were talking about that today. The church is living like in a fast world. They don't think anything's going to happen. Then you got other people saying, well, we're going on. Well, I wish. God has not told me or Daniel that we're going on. It says in the Bible, no man will know the day or hour. We're to watch and pray. I wish God would get us out of here. I don't want to be here. But I'm afraid we're going to have to go through something. Now, I don't know how bad it's going to be. But I know God will take care of us. And I truly believe that he's not going to leave you and I here to suffer. I don't believe that. Because remember what happened with Abraham? And Lot, you know, he took him out of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so I don't believe God's going to leave us here to suffer and die. I don't believe that. All right. I think that's it. I want you to know we love you. We appreciate you. I know you're praying for us. You know, and if you want to help us, we appreciate that too. You know, um, until we meet again, this is Prophetess Donald O'Brien, Servant of the Lord, Donald's Heartfelt Corner. God bless you. Have a good evening, Lord.